Hello there. Today's video, we have kitchen decor DIYs that I can't wait to share with you. I'm Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots, so let's jump into our craft room. First project has a little story here. This little box I had set together probably, with all honesty, maybe six or seven years ago. And I'm not exaggerating, maybe five. Five? Four? Five? Well, we'll see. Um, I have all these little kitchen utensils here. I got like this, these two little turquoise goodies from Walmart. That's probably from Big Lots. Now these right here are some faux like onions and stuff. I got that off a of craft outlet. Now this right here, I filled with the, uh, it's expandable spray foam that you can get in the hardware department or the automotive department at to any hardware store or Walmart. I filled that with that and I let it expand. Now it's definitely set. It only takes 24 hours. But I decided to give it, oh, I don't know, five years. <laughs> but in any event, <laughs> it's definitely set, so we can use it. It's a really good filler for things that, you know, odd things especially, but not like baskets or anything with holes in it. So what I want to do with this little decorative box is I'm going to cut the lid off, and then I'm going to cut the board, uh, the lip off of the lid. I'm going to cut the lid and the lip off. And I don't know what I'm going to do with this lip right now, but I do add it to the back of the, the sign here just as a little decorative piece from behind. So we're going to make a little arrangement out of this. We're going to make her into a pretty little centerpiece. So where I cut the lid off of the top, I'm going to use this craft tape. Now I get this craft tape on my Amazon store. You can take a peek at that. I have a link in my description and the first pin comment. It's just a brown craft tape. It's very good for finishing items. It's good. I like using it like you would on the back of a painting uh, or anything basically that you want to cover up the behind the scenes. So I'm just adding this to the back of the box where we cut the lid off and it gives it a more finished look. It's not 100% professional, but we're going to add so many beautiful, pretty gobbledygook things to it that it won't matter. And now I'm putting some tape at the top of this just to cover the raw edge, but we are going to cover this in ribbon, so no worries, you won't see that. Now, in order to continue on here, we're going to start with the ribbon. Of course, I have some buffalo check or gingham or whatever. It's black and white farmhouse speaks to my farmhouse heart makes me so happy so i'm just going to add this to the, the border here i'm going to glue it to the top and then i'm going to put a bead of glue around the back and just kind of bend it over on itself so that i'm basically using the ribbon as a border around all four edges i'm going to do the top and bottom first and i'm just going to cut them off right at the edge after i glue them down and you'll see i'm going to go right up against the lid the side of the lid here and we're cutting that off boop and boop now, on these edges, I'm going to fold them over. I'm going to try to do sort of like what I think is a packaged deal, like we're, we're wrapping a present. So I'm still going to glue them in half over each other. Now, on these edges here, I'm going to continue to glue them, but I'm going to fold them down on themselves. Try to give it a nicer, neater look. Again, this is the back of a project. So if you're putting this up against a wall or on a table that it won't see it, but if you are using it as a centerpiece, keep in mind you want to try to make the back look as nice as the front or at least not as bad <laughs> as it could be if you're going to try to hide some things so i'm trying to work as though uh everything looks nice from every angle so i wasn't too happy with my little folded over edges here so what i'm doing is i'm taking a this is a scrapbook punch paper punch i've had for years i'm going to take this and i'm going to use it on my uh, craft tape that I used on this as well and I'm going to put this cute little which I don't know why I'm not even in frame to show you this is wonderful isn't it I'm going to put one here so it's kind of like a cute little and I, I still wasn't happy with that but we end up covering it but you'll see at the end <laughs> now here I'm gluing the lid into the back of the box be mindful for what you have chosen to put in your box because you don't want to cover up too much of this cute little you know design that was on the lid that matches your box unless you don't use it then don't worry about it but so i'm going to fill the bottom with some spanish moss just to cover everything and you know that way you don't see it but we're going to put so much more gobbledygook in here just wait so i'm just going to unwrap all of my cute little mini kitchen utensils and then from this little measuring cup thing i'm just going to use the spoons i decided to glue the spoons together in like a little fan shape because you know that's how they look always in the kitchen you know a decorative kitchen i mean i don't know how how many of you use your kitchen decoratively. I don't. Mine is very well loved, very well used. So my uh, measuring spoons are not displayed, but to have them in a cute little kitchen theme arrangement, why not, huh? So in order to get all these things secured in down into our arrangements so that they don't come out and nobody else who comes in to see them is tempted to pull them out and use them since this is not a you know, utensil holder, this is a display item. It is meant to look pretty. All you do is look at it. That is its purpose, is to make you smile. And then you go into your kitchen and you use everything that's already there. I'm going to take some regular floral wire and I'm just going to wrap it around some of the empty holes. Now for the whisk here, I have a floral pin 
that I'm going to put in the bottom here. It has a cute little, I guess, little handle here on the whisk. So I'm going to feed that into the bottom of my whisk and then I'm going to just use it to place down into the styrofoam that 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 spray foam is already set so it's a very good deal also the the handle itself went down in there but the the floral pin was just to added benefit now you saw me use a little knife right there that was to cut into the foam to let the corner piece of that little grater fit down in there better and then also my measuring spoons popped apart just now but we glued them back together and i'm making a hole again with my little knife here i'm pulling out some of the, that spray foam in order to make a divot big enough that the spoons fit into a little bit then I don't have to worry about them popping apart because so they're in there and they're, they're solid. And now for the cute little rolling pin, I'm going to put some wire just around one of the handles where you can't see it. It's going to go between the handle and the actual rolling pin itself. So this took a little bit of maneuvering, but it did fit. It fit. It fit. Okay. It fitted. Do you hear me say that? it fitted? <laughs> it fit. Okay. I made a loop and I decided to get another floral pin out because, Hey, I'm literally just going off you know, I'm flying off the cuff to just try to find a way to secure these items in here. And this is the best I could come up with. If you have better ideas or suggestions, please tell me in the comments. Let me know what you've done. If you have better secure ideas, I put a little bit of glue here and I glued the rolling pin to the inside of the box. And again, I did this a couple days ago. They're all very solid. They're all good to go. Now I was a little worried. I thought maybe this is a little bit too empty, a little bit sparse, but here's where the arrangement came alive for me. When we start to put greenery in, this is right here is the part that makes me happy. That it was my happy moment. That's when my little crafty heart started to shine. And I put in, these are all just various picks. Um, the darker leaves were from Walmart a couple years ago and the eucalyptus is from Amazon. This right here is, um, boxwood from Walmart. They carry that pretty much year round at, at, I've seen for years now. And I'm just randomly adding it. What you can't see is I have a glue pot or a glue skillet off to the side. And it was so much fun using it. When I do arrangements, I love to use a glue skillet. If you don't have one, not a big deal. You're just going to use your glue gun and you're going to put glue on the end of every single pick. Uh, test out your placement. See if you like it first, like that one. I put I poked that one down in there. I liked it. So then I put glue on it and I put it back in. When the arrangement starts to come together, you'll feel it. You'll know it. It just makes you happy. So... Um, the faux little, little, it's, it's beets. This little faux vegetables is beets. I chose the beets for this one because I like the red that matched the whisk, but it comes with uh, garlic and onion also. Again, these are really old. I got them from craft outlets, so I don't know if they're even available anymore, but they're styrofoam in the middle. So I took a pick from, you know, a little piece of, well, uh, what is that? Wire from a, a, a floral arrangement that I saved. And I stuck it in the back of the beet and I'm going to use that to secure it down into. So I put glue on the back of that. Also, I glued in that little stem and now I'm going to glue in the second one and that's going to hold the beets down into our arrangement. Then I decided to add another pick. I put it down into the spray foam first and then just push the other bead on top of it because I didn't want the other one to kind of, I didn't want it to move. I didn't want it to have its free motion. It had, I didn't want it to have any free will anymore. <laughs> this is its new home. You will stay there and you will like it. Now, this little berry pick is a really old pick. I've got at Joann's from some years ago, but just find some little white berries. I know Hobby Lobby carries them pretty much year round in, in either the wedding or the seasonal, not seasonal, but like in the greenery aisles, you could get some berries. They also have berry, berry pip garlands and stuff that you can carry. You could, could possibly add to your, your arrangements. I love adding little white berries to things. It's very, just very pleasant and cute. Now here's that lip I was talking about. I didn't know what to do with. So on this one, the, the cut edge was not apparent. And I put a little bit too much glue here. So here's a little tip. If it starts to turn white because you've rubbed on it and you're trying to pick it out, just get it a little bit of heat to melt it back down. It'll go clear again and you won't have to worry about it. And that's it. So I'm trying to, to bust some stash items I've had planned in my, in my craft area for a very long time. Like again, I, this is probably maybe four to five years old. Maybe, maybe more, but I've had it sitting there and I've been meaning to do it and I wanted to do a kitchen video. So I decided last minute I'm going to add it to this video and it's going to be the first one we see. So tell me what you think. I love how it turned out. It, it still would make a very good Mother's Day. That's come Mother's, Mother's Day present. If you if you know someone who's a baker or a cook, you could, uh, you, could uh, you know, design the accoutrement your cute little additions in there, you know, bakery items instead to someone who's a baker or, or anything like that. This is a very good gift idea, but it's also good for you to just place something cute in your kitchen that's not usable other than looking at it. <laughs> it's what everybody wants. Something that goes in your kitchen that's not usable. Well, technically it's for your eyes. <laughs> now, our second DIY here. I got these spoons at Dollar Tree. 
they're just cute little bamboo spoons. I got a, a spoon and a fork or a fork and a spoon, or they're considered bowl spoons. I don't know. One's got tines or tongs. So, and I got these little pictures also at Dollar Tree. I thought this shape was a little different than I'm used to seeing. There's beautiful little rectangle wall arts. So I grabbed two of each. Now the rubber little grips came off those spoons very easy. And had I been uh, mindful to look when I was in the store, I would realize that they don't fit in for what I wanted to do, but we will persevere, we'll get through it. So that's like, oh, that's cute like that. But what I wanna do is I wanna put it inside and it didn't fit. Dang it, Whitney. Well, no, not a problem. We'll just cut the ends of the spoons a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take everything off of these frames. Now, I had a reverse canvas idea in mind, but what wasn't working out was either the fact that I didn't realize the canvases were so dark, so I have to paint them. So in any event, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take both of these frames and you're gonna get yourself some white paint and you're gonna get paint happy. You gotta do just the front and the top and the sides, the insides. You don't have to do the back because we're gonna glue it down to a piece of uh, foam board that we're gonna cover with fabric. Now, normally I do reverse canvases, but we're not going to use the canvas so save the canvas for another day you may find another use for it now because these don't fit in the side of the frames the way i want them to we just have to cut the tops off so here i'm measuring each one was a little different the fork here needed a little bit less taken off of it than the spoon did as you can see so what i'm going to do here is <clears throat> just going to keep you with me i'm not cutting any of this out i have to take a miter box now i get this i got this at lowe's you can get them on amazon you can get them at home depot hardware store so i'm just taking it in and i'm cutting off the tip is the miter box is very easy to use as you can see use it indoors and that's really all i had to remove from each one very minimal but now i have these prettily neat cut ends and we, we can't have it look neat and cut and tidy and brand new so i'm just sanding them down i'm giving it a roughed edge roughed up edge maybe rounded a little bit so it looks like it's a natural like it was really meant to be that way that it, we didn't have to cut them down to jam them inside of something they didn't fit into you know what i'm saying so as you see here, here's the difference. There's the, the regular raw edge on the left and the new sanded edge on the right. So here's my new sanded and there's the, the raw. And I think it makes it, it's a, it's a tiny little detail that probably nobody will notice, but I, I did and it made me happy. So that's what I did. Now, in order to <clears throat> do what I wanted to, I'm gonna have to take some foam board. Now I've had this foam board for a long time. I got this also at Dollar Tree, but you can pick up some foam board if you have extra pieces of wood. Whatever you have that's a little bit sturdier to put, we're gonna use it as a backing. So I measured them out, I kind of drew around them, and now I'm cutting it out with some apparatuses. As you can see here, the blade on my, my blade cutter was not sharp, so I got a little bit of a hiccup there, but you won't see it because we're covering everything with a lovely fabric. And it is the cutest fabric, guys. It is the cutest fabric. I'm I want like I want I want me to hurry up so I can show you the fabric. So here I'm gonna at first I wanted to leave them together as like a, a one larger like picture set, but then I thought no, I think they'll be cuter as their individuals. Because even as shelf sitters, if you choose to, you could lay one sideways and one vertical up, you know, one right side up, one sideways or vertical and horizontal. Now look at this. This is a crafter square fabric. Now if you can fabric from anywhere you, your heart desires, if you have a fabric stash, go for it. I found this farmhouse fabric last year sometime and it has made me so happy. I've used it probably on maybe one other project, but the black and white stuff here, I haven't used at all. And I love it. I love it to the point where I, I was almost not wanting to put the spoon in front because it would cover up some of it because it's so cute. There's like a little bundle of eggs. There's a cow. There's a mason jar on some of them. This other one's got what, a, a, a cheese wheel, tomato, cows. It's got vegetables, eggplants. It's, it's just so, they're just so cute. And of course the word farmhouse is all over it all over the fabric. So that was I'm like, oh, I see the word farmhouse. It's going right in my cart. Please take my money. You will come home with me and you will be mine. <laughs> but uh, this, as you can see here, I am covering the foam board like you would wrap a package as best as you can. So I'm just with hot glue, folding over the edges, trying to get the corners a little bit cuter. Now we're going to do the same thing for both of them. And again, since we have a fabric that has an, you know, a right side up and down, it's, you know, it, it, it has a pattern and it has words. You gotta make sure you have the right side up. Um, right now we're just covering it so it doesn't matter. But again, anytime you have any type of design on your fabric and it, it's gonna require it to be facing upwards, just make sure that you have it facing the right way so that your words aren't upside down. But we'll do the same thing with the white one. We're gonna glue it all down. This one has a little bit more fabric so it was easier to kind of package it as you'd say. But then also, to make our backs look a little pretty, we're going back to my favorite little friend here, our craft tape. And just like on our first project, and many you've seen me do before, I'm going to take the back and I'm going to cover up the raw edges with this 
uh, craft tape. And it gives you just a, a nicer finished look. That's all I'm going for is a finished look. If it doesn't matter to you, then please omit this step, move on, collect $200. And uh, <laughs> that was a Monopoly reference. Anyways, pass go, collect $200 and move on with your project. I'm going to cover the backs to make them look a little bit nicer. We are still going to be securing our picture hangers back in the back. We are still going to be, um, we're gonna hot glue the frames back on the front and we're gonna use some staples. So there is still some more securing that needs to be done that you will see on the back, but the raw edges of the fabric just weren't cute to me. And again, it's not something you're going to see. Now see here, this this little bit thick, I didn't realize when I was doing this, my first time with using foam board. Um, it literally is my first time ever using foam board. I didn't realize how thick it is. So that's kind of a little negative for me in my, in my opinion, but I still love these projects. I, I mean, they're, they would, I would love to put them anywhere in my home. I'm very proud of them. I think they look cute. Even with the thickness on the back, it kind of adds to it. But maybe it's like maybe another border or, or a ribbon or a rope around the side. I, But I didn't want it to become such a big, thick project. So here I'm stapling through the foam board into the wood frame. So we've got staples and the hot glue between the frame and the foam board. And again, staple, staple, staple. And now we're going to add the picture hangers back on. Now these were on the original. You, I jibber jabbered through it, but you... You may have saw that I pulled them out with a, with a, um, you know, insert difficult word here, Whitney, screwdriver, <laughs> you know, the big, uh, fancy screwdrivers pulled out the screwdriver. So we're just going to tap them back in easiest thing to, to put that hardware back in. Those are a really good kind of, of wall hanger. Now we're going to put our main events in both of these girls were easy. Just add your glue to the back, glue it down onto that fabric and you're good as done. You're good. You're good as done with that. Now we're going to add a couple ribbons. I had a piece of extra ribbon. We're going to cut the edges off. This is six and a half inch wide burlap and save those edges because we're going to use them as bows. I love using all the little remnants. We're also going to fray this a little bit. So just pull some of the threading out of your burlap, the natural burlap weaving, it'll come apart. What I'm going to do here is we're going to have a little bit easier of a bow if you have bow issues. So put a piece of twine down, glue that vertically, then glue your ribbon across the middle. I'm using a staple here because it's wood and it's going to give me another way to secure it, not just hot glue. Take both edges and cross them over themselves. And then you're going to take your twine from above and below and you're going to kind of kind of pinch. You don't really have to cinch it in the middle if you don't, but you're just going to tie like you're going to tie your shoes. And you can see how the bow will start to naturally bend. You can kind of pinch it. You can kind of manipulate it. But now you're just going to tie a knot, tie a knot to secure it down really tight. And you've got a cute little classic fluffy bow. I love how it looks all, I like fluffy chunky bows. And this cinching it down in the middle, you've got it glued and stapled down. It's secure down to the wood, the wood uh, spoon, spoon fork, spork, <laughs> whatever the label wanted to say it was. I, I know that label said it was a spoon, but that is not a spoon. But anyways, so you're good to go. Now, if you're me and you're extra, you're going to keep going and you're going to add another little bit of black and white, you know, buffalo check ribbon because buffalo check equals farm, farmhouse or farmhouse equals buffalo check. I kept everything black and white. I wanted to keep it neutral because if you want to add a color, add a color. I really love this classic design. So here I'm going to do the second one for our, our, our black fabric. Same thing. You're going to put your twine down vertically, glue it. You're going to put your ribbon down horizontally, staple it, cross them over and tie a knot with the, with the twine. Add another bow. This is just cinched in the middle, tied also with twine and glue that to the middle of that other, uh, glue it to the middle of your, the, glue it to the middle of that other thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so now we're going to move on to a little bit of greenery. Um, this one right here is from Michael's. I've had this for years. I've been cutting off of it off and on. Now these brand new girls are baby's breath from Amazon. I just got them recently. They are linked in my Amazon shop. If you want to take a peek, there's a link in the description and the pinned comment below. These were very affordable. You got a very decent amount of them. They are plastic, but I really like the way they look. So I'm just going to cut little picks off and I'm going to tuck everything in and around the bows as you may know if you've been here with me for a while first off thank you so much for joining me in general but if you've been here for a while thank you on top of that for continuing to come back i appreciate you being here and you will know that i can't leave a bow alone i can't just leave a bow and not shove all kinds of florals and ribbons and 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 wood items and charms oh my i can't just leave it alone i do so we're adding greenery to the left right up tied down you don't have to do the same pattern in fact on these i purposely tried to make the baby's breath go into different areas so that they weren't identical. I didn't want them to match 100%. So 
said, please come closer so you can watch me pull these apart. I don't know why at this point I decided to say, hey, now you can watch me. So here now I'm adding the other little bundle. I'm cutting them off at the stems and I'm adding those little um, longer sprigs. Those are from the Michaels bush that I've had for so many, many, many time, many years. And then I cut off a piece of the baby's breath off right at the head and then I glued it right to the middle of the bow. And it was so cute. It's very effective, very farmhouse, very fluffy very needing a lot more space than I thought I would <laughs> but they're super cute what do you think tell me your thoughts tell me all your crafty thoughts in the comment below do you like this do you like the ribbon I believe this ribbon actually you know what that is Halloween ribbon from Dollar Tree it has a kind of a shiny edge on it but I think it works with the ribbon I mean with the fabric and the burlap so I love how these turned out these literally make me so happy I mean I'm smiling like a goofball when I look at them that's when you know You've done something you like. That's when you know it's definitely your style. It makes you happy. I love them. Tell me what you think. Now, our next project, we're going to do a swag. And this time I'm going to use a paint stick for our base. So here's just a lovely little paint stick. You can get them in a 10 pack. I got this at Lowe's. You can get them Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart. This is fairly inexpensive for a 10 pack. I do not remember how much. I want to say like a couple bucks. And now we're going to use various bushes of greenery. We've got some from Hobby Lobby. We've got some from Michael's. Uh, that's a, yeah, that's a Michael's greenery bush. These two girls here, those are, those flowers are from Dollar Tree. So we've got a mixture of all kinds of beautiful gobbledygook. Now check this out. I rusted this myself this was a brand new grater that i got at tj maxx here's the, the tag it was 2.99 it's a little mini mini grater it was really cute stainless steel and it was shiny and pretty and it had all these little rubber pieces on it so like it had this on the handle i cut that off and it had that little rubber deal down at the bottom i pulled it off and i stuck this in a ziploc bag with some toilet bowl cleaner and i forgot about it in my garage for about I don't know, two, three days. But I, the first couple days, I, the first day I was watching it, it rusted pretty quickly. And you have to keep moving it around. More liquid cleaner is better. I had, I have a gel. It's like a, a bleachy, it has gel with bleach in it for my, for toilet bowl cleaner. But it rusted it up so great. And that's your end product. So after a couple days, and when I remembered it again, I was like, oh, I gotta go get it. Of course, I didn't record myself putting it in the bag, but I'll do that for the next one because I have more planned. We're gonna put this in our arrangement. So that's what makes this one a kitchen arrangement. We're gonna stick a cheese grater in there. <laughs> now, I don't have any long bushes to start with. I'm gonna use some stems from a previous bush here. That's, you can tell I've used it on other projects. So I'm using my paint stick as my base. I'm gonna take my longer pieces. I'm gonna first glue them down to the paint stick, okay? And we're gonna fluff them and mess with them because we're weird like that and we can't just not fluff things. And I'm gonna use my staple gun and I'm just going to staple and glue these down. And this is basically how we're going to build this entire swag. You're basically doing a vertical or horizontal, not horizontal, you're doing a vertical, but what is vertical but down? Vertically down? Downward. We're doing a teardrop type arrangement. Now I'm just going to cut off stems from various other bushes of greenery that make me happy. You saw right there, I just burnt my finger. So I'm calling myself out. Yes, I did. Burnt my finger, stuck a finger right in it. And we're gonna, we're just pulling off bent bushes and we're gonna add them in with glue. And at some point you'll see a couple, in a couple times I might use a staple down lower on the paint stick, but this entire area that we're gluing things to right now is just to secure it, but we are gonna end up wrapping it with some burlap and some rope. So this isn't going to be its only you know avenue to secure things down it will have its you know it will have its um security i keep saying secure it, it will be reinforced that so you won't have to worry about it now this guy right here was too bundle i mean it was too fluffy to add to the the arrangement itself i wanted to have these in there but i thought that was too much so what i did was uh, that's just too much right now too big and too flute, too too much, too thick. There we go. So I took two pieces off. I'm, I'm just gonna show you quickly because it was so boring. <laughs> so long and intensive when I was trying to edit this. So I just decided to keep it up. I'm gonna take two stems from previous picks that I saved. I'm gonna take two to three little strands off of the original bush. I'm gonna feed them down onto the new picks that I picked out. Pick the new <laughs> the new wire stems that I from previous picks. And then I'm gonna put the toppers back on them. So I made my own picks from 
the original bush. So you see here, because I don't have the toppers, I took the wire and I curled it with my needle nose pliers. You just curl it down and that keeps them from coming off of the end. Now we have two new picks and I'm going to feed them into the arrangement. I'm going to use glue and I'm going to basically glue it to and secure it to other parts of the arrangement that are already there. So this one's not necessarily depending on everything we've done at the top so far of the handle. Now we're going to add our florals. So I have these nice little wildflower looking deals from Hobby Lobby. I've had them for years. Now they carry them year round. In seasonal, you'll see different colors, but I've had these white ones for a while and I wanted to keep things fresh and, and neat. And we have spring coming up. Eh, there's that staple gun. So there, I stapled this one in. And the rest of these I'm just adding as accents. So place them in as you see fit. If you have something that's got a longer stem and you can use it to your advantage, then go ahead and place them a little bit lower in your arrangement. Now these right here are white lilacs from Dollar Tree. I felt that I could, I could sneak in some Dollar Tree florals because again, they're not always my favorite, but they are really good as filler. And this is a Dollar Tree regular that I love that I cannot pronounce. And I know you've got, you, you've, you guys have told me in the comments many times how to say it. And I want to say it's Estil or Estilby or something. So I just say a uh, uh, pointy flower. So we're going to add these to it because again, they're very fresh, very spring. And to me, I'm keeping with the same greenery, just a little pop of here and there of white, but very farmhouses makes me happy makes me so happy. I love how it turns out. Now, remember, I wanted to do a mini swag. This is turning into a full-size swag. Now, I've got some leftover nautical rope here from Dollar Tree. We're going to use this as our handle. This handle is probably something you've seen me do before, but we're going to add a little bit, I mean, we're going to add a little bit more to it just because this one's very, it's just, I wanted a different feel, but I love doing this type of secure. I like this type of handle. I love this type of arrangement. So I'm just gluing the rope around the sides, making a loop at the top to hang it with. And now I'm taking that six inch burlap that we used earlier and I'm wrapping it around it and I'm, I'm going to fold it in half, wrap it around it, secure it with a couple staples. And then here I'm just taking and wrapping it and finding its new home. You're going to, you know, play with the ribbon, play with the material, find a way to get in there. I liked it a little bit kind of messy. So then I grabbed the rest of the nautical rope and then I'm going to glue that down on the back after I, I secure the burlap in a way that I think I'll be happy with it because it's going to be sort of a, 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 a complement. It's going to be a supplement to our ribbon, to our bow. But then I'm going to glue the nautical rope kind of inside of it on the back to hide it and then wrap the handle with this nautical rope as tight as you can. You're securing it with hot glue. It's not going to come out. But then also just for, you know, S and giggles, whatever makes you happy. Let's add, I don't know, zip ties, glues, bolts, you know, you name it. Um, but I'm going to put some staples into it with the staple gun. And also this piece right here, I'm cutting that off because it's going to get hidden on the back and I'm going to shove it in the bow. So there, there's some extra, there's some extra staples. And again, we're going to tie some more goodies to the front. I'm going to cut the edges off of my burlap and then fray it a little bit. And now it's time for the main event. This ribbon is very farmhouse. It's very beautiful. It's a, I want to say a ticking stripe ribbon. I got it on craftoutlet.com a few years ago. I'm sure you can find something complimentary in, in, um, in, your, in your search if you don't have anything already in your stash. But first, I need to add the grater. I almost forgot to add the grater, the whole purpose of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some twine and I'm going to loop it through the handle. So I'm going to take my two cut pieces in my left hand and we're going to take the loop in the bottom and we're going to put it through the handle of the, of the grater. I call it a cheese grater, but I know you can grate other things with it. But I mean, honestly, do you? I, I mean, I grade, that is a cheese grater in my house. <laughs> so uh, loop it through the handle and you're going to take your, your cut ends and put it through the loop on of the twine. So then when you pull it up, you get this little cinched. I honestly don't know what kind of knot. Is that a knot? It's it's, it's just a way to secure things. It's not going to come loose from that. And now from here, we can take this. I'm going to kind of work the, the loopy part to the back of the handle. I put a piece, I put a staple here, but it doesn't hold. Just so you know, it's, you'll see things as you, as you continue to work, they don't hold. Stapled it again, and I'm going to tie it in a knot. And then from there, I'm going to glue it. So here's me taking the staple. The staple didn't stay. But, you know, the, the cheese, cheese, the cheese, the grater is going to have movement. So it's pretty. It makes sense. If you put it on a door, you'll see it shake a little bit. If you have it on a wall, it's just pretty. It's just pretty. That's just how it is. Now, for the ribbon, I decided to do a little bit of cinching instead of doing the normal bow. But you can just wrap it around itself like a awareness ribbon shape and then pinch it in the middle. I added a piece of twine to the back of it. So horizontally, because I'm going to use that to tie it to our handle. 
So once again, we're also going to take twine. We're going to cinch it in the middle, tie it in a knot, wrap it around a few times to make it our little, you know, little center of the bow nice and thick. So pretty. And now I'm going to glue it down right on the back. And then we're going to flip it over and squish it. But I'm a bow fluffer regardless. I do that stuff in stores. When I see bows that need fixing, I will do it. I have no shame. I will fluff bows and readjust them and mess with them all I want. And then we're tying it to the back again, adding some more hot glue. And then here I'm adding our little pieces of cut um, greenery from the very beginning. I added them to our, you know, the little folds of the burlap here. This is just to add a little bit more, bring the arrangement kind of vertically upwards. I'm going to dovetail the ends of the ribbon because hopefully I didn't forget to do that. Glad I already got the other one done at some point. <laughs> and now I have an extra piece of of greenery here, but I didn't want the back to be as, I don't know, crazy looking. So I covered up some of all that with two leaves. You don't have to do this. You can skip this step. Again, you can still see the ruler there on the uh, paint stick. And I love that too. I think it's super cute, but you're not going to see the back, but this is just something that I do. And I wanted to show you that. Now, remember we cut the edges off of our burlap, save that. See this whole part right here? We cut all that off when we were making the ribbon for our previous projects, the two spoons. Now I'm going to use this. I'm going to wrap it around the handle of our grater and I'm just going to tie a very easy one time only first try in, you know, first try in your it, just tie a bow, tie a bow like you're tying your shoes and then move on from there. And that's all I did to just add one little extra piece of something that probably really didn't need to be added, but I did it anyways. <laughs> so there's that. And I, of course I'm going to continue to fluff and mess and fuss and, and make things and adjust the ribbon. And last but not least at the last minute, I was thinking I'm going to use this rub on transfer from Dollar Tree. See this little mason jar here. This little mason jar is going to accompany our handle. I thought it was cute. It's a tiny little detail. You're only going to see if you're really close to it, but I couldn't help it. So I added it in. What are your thoughts? Do you think it's a little bit too much? Is it needed? Is it not needed? I like the way it looks. I just felt that it was fun. I think it's so cute. Tell me what you think. Farm life. <laughs> I love it. Mason jars in general are just very cute. So there's the back. Isn't that sweet? So nice. It's nice and neat too. And then our little grater, of course, has movement. But tell me what you think. She's so pretty. No, oh, look how pretty. I mean, I love the way this turned out. And I wanted to make something that was a little bit more farmhouse. I also wanted to make something with a paint stick because we needed something that, I mean, it has a natural handle to it. It's cute. Um, in my opinion, it's cute. And then I love all these greeneries, all these bright greens and dark greens. Just, just add them together. Squish anything you want together that makes you happy. And um, look how pretty. Tell me your thoughts. I love it. Now, our next project here, we're going to take this chunk of wood. Now, I ordered, I didn't order. <laughs> I went to home, I went to Lowe's and Lowe's wouldn't cut wood for me. So I left. I went to Home Depot and they're like, yeah, we'll make cuts only 12 inches big, blah, blah, blah. I got to pay for it. I'm like, whatever, you'll cut for me. Cool. Well, I found a piece of wood off to the side that someone had cut and then they didn't want. So I was like, hey, can I have that? I'm like, sure. So they cut it into 12 inch pieces. So I got this weird, odd piece. It was perfect. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to use this with some stain. My favorite stain. It's a, it's not a stain. It's a wood tint from folk art. It's the color walnut, walnut, and it's a home. It's a wood tint. I love this stuff. If you've been here, you've heard me very repetitive. Yes. I know my gloves are disgusting. This is the last time I've used them. I recycle them quite often. Anyhow, <laughs> I'm moving on. I add a lot of water to this because I didn't, I knew that the wood would soak it right up. So I added a lot of water. And I'm just kind of getting a good, a good coverage. I didn't want too dark on the ends because you know, the ends in pieces of woods always soak up woods and wax or stains and waxes and stuff. So this tent went in great. It was the right color. I'm going to white wax it because I want it to have that really pretty gray farmhouse color that I love, like really aged, aged wood that's been weathered for a while that as soon as you put the white wax on this, it turns out great. So here's our wood. Now I'm going to, with all honesty, it is not completely dry but it is somewhat dry after my cleanup. So we're moving on. Now, next step here is we're going to take 
Debbie's DIY Wax. It is uh, Debbie's Design Diary DIY Wax. It is the white wax. I have a link. I get all my DIY products from miltonsdaughter.com. Lori is the owner and awesome lady. There is a link and a code in the description to see if there's any goodies you want there, just take take the code, put it in the cart, see what applies. Some things don't, some things do, but there is an incentive program for repeat business. So take a look at her website because she gives, she just has some really awesome stuff. I get a lot of stuff there. Anyhow, now, as you see here, this is what the white wax does to this, this color of uh, wood tint. I love it. It turns it into that gray weathered like it's been sitting out in the in the barn and the it's been rained on now of course i don't have access to actual barn wood i live in a big city <laughs> i do not live anywhere near farms nothing out here ages and it's hard to find stuff that's you know old old and broken <laughs> unless you're in my mom's backyard most of that stuff's old and broken but anyways moving on <laughs> look at this color this is like the perfect color and i love how that white wax gets into the grain of the wood it makes me happy now I'm going to use some of this faux leather that everybody was just crazy about last year or year before from Dollar Tree. I finally found some because, again, I'm on the West Coast, so I get everything late. <laughs> I got some white faux leather. I'm going to measure it to the size of our block of wood, and I'm just going to cut it. Now, I end up cutting this down a little bit. I'm going to trim it down a little bit more, but I'm basically trimming it to the size of our wood and making sure that I have a good spot here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my most favorite font from IOD. This is also purchased from miltonsdaughter.com. I love all of their IOD products. I've got a stamp called Farmhand. This is a wonderful font. It's very, very farmhouse. As you can say, it's farmhand. Dirt. Catch me, catch me there. So what we're going to spell out is the word kitchen because this is a kitchen decor video. <laughs> and then of course, if you're recording yourself, please make sure you're spelling things correctly. Same thing as like, if you want to go get a tattoo, please make sure things are spelled correctly. Oh my goodness. And the whole time I'm sitting there going, K-I-T-C-H-E-N. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I wanted to do this in a gray. So I have this hickory smoke color and I was a little worried it might be a little bit too bright. So I took my little scrap piece of leather or faux leather, stamped it. And I was like, yeah, I don't like that. It's a little bit too light. So I went and I got my, uh, my black stamp, which is called soot black soot. This is, um, an archival ink from Tim Holtz distressed. I believe it's called Tim Holtz distressed. They're in my Amazon shop. If you want to see and get a, a four pack of them. So I used black turned out great. The K in my opinion, I needed to put the K down just one more time. So I pulled it off and just popped it right back down and darkened it where I wanted it. So my heart was happy. And now I want to trim it down a little bit because it's just a tiny bit too big. And I do have a little bit of allowance on the top and bottom, right? So this is real time. So sorry if it's too slow, <laughs> but this is how things go. Normally I speed up my videos to about six to eight times faster than I actually do them. So in some parts I want to try to start leaving things in with the actual speed because this is how things go, making sure things are measured correctly, making sure their lines are straight. And you're not always going to get things straight. They're not always going to be neat and tidy. And sometimes that's where the beauty lies. If you, in your mistakes, if something is crooked and you've seen me do that many times, I have a couple, just a couple of videos ago, I made a little wooden sign that said, hello. And the, the letters were crooked. The H was crooked. It just, and I liked it. The end result, they were pretty. And, and I, you know, I find beauty in the mistakes. There are no mistakes here so far, <laughs> at least in my opinion. So now I've got a little bit of an allowance on the, the top or bottom. Now, yes, it hurts me to cover up that much of that beautiful, beautiful um, colored and, and the grain of that wood, but I really wanted this kitchen sign to just speak to me. So I went and got my little Tupperware of saved hardware in hooks and screws and pins and, and and, and clips, oh my. And so I'm gonna take these little nails here. These are little finishing nails that they always give you like a billion and four and you don't need four, you just need a billion. Like when every time you build one of those like prefab um, furniture pieces and you have to nail in the, the cardboard piece on the back that's supposed to look like wood and they give you six million of these, these, uh, these cute little finishing nails. If you don't have them, then you can buy some from the dollar store or actually, I don't even know if they have them at the dollar stores, but you can get the hardware stores. But again, I have so many of them from other pieces of furniture. I only glued down right there on this inch, the, the leather on this end, because I didn't want it to pop up on me. And then I thought, well, if the four corners wasn't enough for me. So then I just kind of did four on the top and four on the bottom. So I'm not measuring. I'm just eyeballing it. It's like the best way to do things. Just eyeball it, whatever makes you happy. Now, with transparency, you can see a little bit of the black on next to the K. This ink didn't dry as fast as I wanted it to. 
And it took actually two days for it before I was touching it in, the, in my kitchen to where it wouldn't smear. So that's probably because of the ink and the actual faux leather, whatever it's made of, it just they didn't like each other for that long of a time. It did eventually dry, but you don't have to do this. You could use a flour sack. Don't use, you don't have to use the faux leather. Use a flour sack, a cheesecloth, burlap, something like that. You could use different mediums. You don't have to worry about the ink smearing. Now I'm gonna add a beautiful little touch of our farmhouse right to the middle. I'm going to do that buffalo check ribbon that I love so much. And that's actually from Michael's from back in the day. And then I'm going to use some twine. Now I got this tiny little, tiny, tiny little 3,600 foot roll of twine from Amazon because again, my Dollar Trees like to run out of the twine and never restock it. So I said, fine Dollar Tree, I got you. And now I did spend more than you would, but for 3,600 feet, I got a better deal than buying it at Dollar Tree. <laughs> I just will have it for the next 10 years, but that doesn't bother me. I will use lots and lots of twine. <laughs> so be prepared, lots of twine coming soon. Now, these little scoops here, I got at Hobby Lobby and I did not record me opening the package. So here's the, from their website. It's a pack of three scoops. You can get it back in the party section, like where you do all the different little, you know, birthday party themes and stuff. This was on an end cap with farmhouse stuff with tags and all kinds of cute stuff. So these little wooden scoops, uh, there's a pack of three. I'm going to take it and I'm getting it wet here with my water sprayer, as you can see. And I'm going to use a baby wipe and some, just some cheap paint. Just grab some white paint because we're basically, I want to whitewash it. I don't want to have to paint it, you know, neatly with a paintbrush and make sure everything is in it. We're just going to put water on it. We're watering down the paint and the baby wipe helps smooth things out and move things around. And we're just going to whitewash this little wood scoop to make it look not so, I don't know, store-bought, even though it is store-bought. So basically we're just trying to make it look not as it was intended. <laughs> I want it to look like a cute little whitewash scoop. And there, that's basically how, how I wanted it. And of course, I'm going to have to just tap, just add a little bit more on there. Of course, when you're not done. Now I'm done. Now, I got these little wooden cutouts here at Amazon. They're um, little mason jar, little, like, I think they're laser cut, little laser cut wood pieces. You'll see them in my Amazon shop. I got them a year or two ago, but they're still there. And I did the same thing, just a little light whitewashing with the paint. Now I wanted to put a hole in it because we're going to turn the mason jar little tag, little guy here into a tag or a charm. And I have this one hole punch, <clears throat> but yeah. Yeah, it didn't work. It's like, no matter how hard you press Whitney, th that that is not going through there. It just wasn't going through. I thought maybe I could get away with it because it wasn't as thick of a wood as I thought it was, but regular hole punchers just don't. So far, I haven't found anything that they work for. So with all that going forward, I'm gonna try pushing some more. I'm gonna try, nope, still not working. Hey, no, not working. So I ended up getting my crocodile out because she is faithful and never lets me down. As long as things aren't too thick or you want something right in the center of your project. <laughs> but I know there's a big bite that I don't have. I might buy that. But this guy here is also in my Amazon shop, should you need one. Popped it right through, so easy. And you can do this on a lot of different mediums, not just these wood chips, not just, you know, there's plastic. I've used them on chargers, on plastic chargers. It doesn't split anything. I haven't had a problem yet. It's just whatever the design is and that it's a heavier duty or a heavier duty. It's a heavier duty hole punch. It's meant for scrapbooking, for putting in grommets and different things like that. It's got all kinds of stuff, but I love it. I've used it many times in my, in my uh, crafting adventures. So now what I'm thinking is how am I going to attach this? I'm going to do the same thing we did on the cheese grater in our previous project is I'm going to push the, uh, the cut ends through the hole and then I'm going to loop the cut ends through the loop end and we're going to put, we're going to tie that down. I think it's just a nicer way to finish things instead of just tying a knot. I like doing this on a lot of different, anything I have to secure onto something that you're going to end up seeing it. I like doing this, this particular, I guess it's a knot. I like, I just like doing this as a finish to the project. So like whatever you end up securing things to, I end up pulling them through. As you can see here, we're going to struggle for a minute to get that through. And now we can pull it a little bit tighter. And then from here, we can cut these tails a little bit shorter and we're gonna glue them to the, the, the top of our little scoop here. And it becomes our little extra charm. And of course, I'm doing all this extra stuff because we're gonna add it to the top of our block because I can't just leave the block alone. But again, you could stop after we put the ribbon on it and there you have your shelf sitter piece or your, your tabletop decor. I have to add something in because I can't just leave it alone. I'd have to add more to it. So I gotta put my touch on it make my, my, my farmhouse happy. Farmhouse heart happy. <laughs> so now I'm going to take, um, some more of the, um, twine here. And at first I started to wrap it around, but then I thought, no, 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 you need to have a handle because 
I accidentally skipped over. I didn't hit record when I put it in. We're going to put some hardware in the top of the wood and then we're going to secure this to it. So I put two cut ends on here because we're going to use that to tie it to our block. And then I used another piece of twine and wrapped it around the middle. So we have our nice little cinched item here that covers up where we secured our little mason jar charm. And I'm going to cut this piece off. And as you see, I come out here, it's still connected, but we're going to cut it. Now here's where I lost my footage. I didn't hit record. So here's our end, here's our end product. Now I took this little piece of metal hardware and I screwed that down into the wood with my hands. It went in very smooth. It's just a screw with a little eye on the end of it. And then from there, I tied in the twine on the end of the scoop. And then I tied in the buff, a, a little bit of Buffalo check ribbon. And then I got two bows on it. That whole part, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't hit record. I went to hit, I went to, I thought I was turning it off and I basically, and then I saw it turn on. I was like, oh, I just did all that. And I'm showing the camera and I didn't, it didn't record it because I never hit record. So that was my mistake on that guys. So sorry about that last little bit, but again, screw in a little uh, metal eye and then tie your twine and your ribbon to it. And there you go. You got your cute little charm. I love how it turned out. It's so cute. It's so effective and so farmhouse. It's so farmhouse. Like <laughs> I can't get over how cute it is. Tell me your thoughts. That's it for today, guys. That's our, our, our lot of farmhouse kitchen decor for now. Sorry this video is running long. If you're still here with me, just give me a heart or tell me, hey, I'm here. Just say hi. Thank you for staying for such a long video. And thank you for coming every single week to those of you who are joining me. If you're new here, welcome. I'm happy and overjoyed that you're here. I can't say thank you enough. I love every single one of you. And with all that being said... <laughs> Oh, we're not, we're not signing off yet. I have much more to do. Check out this. Look at this. This is cute. I love all this. Tell me what you think about this. <laughs> I love all these things. And of course, they all kind of had a theme. That first one I needed to get out of my stash. I'll be adding some odd things to my videos or just making one-off videos of things I just want to make. I've had projects sitting for, for years that I've had planned and I'm going to get rid of them. I'm going to start making them and getting rid of them. So be prepared for some weird videos. But like I said, thank you guys so much for joining me. I have a coffee page, so if you learn anything from my videos or you like what you see, you feel you want to donate a little bit, it helps my channel go. You can drop that. There's a link in the description. And also my DIYs will be for sale. I need to declutter. So take a peek there too. And with all that being said, I love you more than I can possibly say in words. Many hugs, happy crafting, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.